So here, there is a risk that inventory may be overvalued. And another thing still on this same thing. In addition, inventory days have increased, like the inventory turnover days. Here, like what we calculated here, they increased from 64 days to 99 days. Inventory turnover days is like how long they take to replace stock. Yeah, that's increased from 64 days to 99 days. So, inventory days have increased from 64 days to 99 days and inventory turnover has fallen from 5.7 in 2020 to 3.7 in the current year. So there is a risk that inventory is overvalued. That's the risk we have here. So what's the auditor's response? The auditor has to carry out a detailed cost and net realizable value testing to be performed. As we said, like inventory is supposed to be recorded as the lower of cost and net realizable value. So the auditor will have to compare the two, the cost and the net realizable value of inventory and see which one is lesser and see whether it's what was recorded in the financial statements. So the auditor will carry out a detailed cost and net realizable value testing and then the aged inventory report will be reviewed. In the first one, we had the aged receivables list, like receivables that have been there for so long. So here we shall have the aged, the aged inventory list or report that shows inventory that has been in stock for so long. So the inventory, the aged inventory report will be reviewed to assess whether inventory requires rating down. So that is the second risk. Then the third one is that directors have extended the useful life of the plant and machinery from three to five years. We saw that when we were reading the question. Here, directors extended the useful life of the plant and machinery from uh, three to five years. Every time you see this extension of useful life, just know it's a risk. So from three to five years resulting in the depreciation charge reducing. So they told us that the depreciation charge reduced. So under IAS 16, property plant and equipment, useful lives are supposed to be reviewed annually. And if the asset lives have genuinely increased, this change is supposed to be reasonable. So, however, there is a risk that a reduction has occurred in order to achieve the profit targets. Because when they reduce depreciation, remember depreciation is considered to be an expense. When they reduce depreciation, it will increase the profit. So there is a risk that, is, that profit is overstated. Because when they reduced the useful life, sorry, when they increased the useful life, depreciation reduced. So when depreciation reduced, expense is reduced. When expense is reduced, profit, I mean profit increases. Should I excuse me? Profit increases. So in this case, the property plant and machinery is overvalued and profit is overstated. Yeah, property plant and machinery is overvalued since they have reduced its depreciation. Yeah, so it is overvalued and profit is overstated. So where, where you see a decrease in the useful life of uh, a plant, property and equipment, just know that 
plant and machinery is overvalued and profit is overstated. So what will be the auditor's response? Discuss with the directors. The rationale for extending the useful life so the auditor has to inquire from the directors like to find out why they extended the useful life of the plant and machinery. Also, the five-year life should be compared to how often these assets are replaced, and this provides evidence for the useful life of assets. So, the auditor has to inquire from the directors to find out why they extended the useful life of the plant, and then also assess if it is reasonable. Yeah, so the, this is a common response, by the way, like where you feel stuck, like when you are real stuck, you just put, discuss with management about this and that. Yeah, this is a common response. Then another risk we have is the the directors need to reach a profit level of 150M in order to receive their annual bonus. We in the question, the directors need to meet a target profit before interest and taxation of 150M in order to be paid their annual bonus. So this can cause pressure. So the directors need to reach a profit level of 150M in order to receive their annual bonus. There is a risk that they may feel under pressure to manipulate the results through judgments taken or through the use of provisions. So the directors may feel under pressure and then they end up manipulating the financial statements so that they can achieve the target. So that's the risk pressure. So what's the auditor's re response to this is that throughout the audit, the team will need to be alert to this risk and maintain professional skepticism. This is also a common response where you feel stuck. You can use this. You'll be like throughout the audit, the team will need to be alert and maintain professional skepticism or discuss with the directors and all that. Those are two common responses. So they will need to carefully review judgmental decisions and compare treatment against prior years. In addition, a, represent, a written representation should be obtained from management confirming the basis of any significant judgment. So the Auditor, first of all, will maintain professional skepticism. We said professional skepticism, it's being alert. Being alert to conditions that can lead to material misstatements. And questioning everything. Yeah. So the auditor will also need to review judgmental decisions and compare like how they were treated in the previous year and how they are treated in this current year. Then another risk we have is that due to a change in material in the material supplier, the quality of products used has deteriorated. Like here in the question, KCC changed their material main material supplier to a cheaper one, to a cheaper alternative. So due to a change in the material supplier, the quality of products used has deteriorated and this has led to customers complaining for their five-year buildings war warranty. It is here in the question. This has led to some customers co claiming on their building warranties for extensive repairs. So this has led to customers claiming on their five-year building warranty. So if the overall number of people claiming for the warranty is likely to increase, then the warranty provision should 
possibly be high. So if, if the directors have not increased the level of the provision, then the risk is that provision is understated. So where you see things of warranty, guarantee, just know they come with provision. The things of provision for contingent, contingent liabilities, provision for contingent assets. We studied that in accounting theory. So where you see warranty, guarantee, provision comes in. Eh? So here there is a risk that provision is understated. So what's the auditor's response? The auditor has to review the warranty provision. Like what was written under provision in light to the increased level of claims to confirm completeness of the provision. The auditor has to compare to see if they match. Like the level of claims matches the amount that was put for provision. Then another risk we have is KCC has received a short term loan of 300M from the bank. We saw that in the question. This loan needs to be paid in 2022 and it should be disclosed as a current liability. So here it is. I've said in order to improve their operating cash flow, the directors borrowed 300M from DFCU Bank during the year. And this is due for payment at the end of 2021. So it is supposed to be paid within one year. So this loan needs to be repaid in 2022 and it should be disclosed should be disclosed as a current liability. So the risk here is that current liabilities may be understated. That's the risk. Then what's the auditor's response to this? During the audit, the team need to check that